So today we're going to look at why Tesla is going to destroy Waymo in the rideshare market. We're going to start with a clip from Tasha Keeney and move into a very powerful argument from Sawyer Merritt and Omar from Holmar's catalog. So here's Tasha on Tesla FSD. I mean, technically, like if they wanted to, they could launch a, a, a robo taxi service now, right? They would just need the regulatory approval to start charging for commercial service. Um, you know, they would need to probably do some kind of update that tells customers like this is what you're agreeing to by not touching the wheel at all. And they might need some approvals there. But the car is showing that it's possible. So I think it's like it's not a question of if it'll happen. It's a question of when. And when you compare it to Waymo, well, Waymo is doing full blown commercial service. So it is a different animal right now. I mean, you can get an aroma way, but Waymo Robo Taxi in uh, Phoenix, um, in San Francisco, if you're allowed in through the through the initial testers program, and then pretty soon in LA, um, and and that's you know no one's in the front seat at all, but it's limited operation areas. Also, importantly, Waymo doesn't have that many cars. I mean, Tesla has millions of cars on the road uh, where this could be capable. So so that's like the Tesla scale promise. Um, which you would expect means that they could roll out robo taxi service in more cities uh, than competitors like Waymo. Um, but you'd also expect it to be more performant with that data scale. And that's what we're starting to see. We're getting word from Omar, who uses Waymo frequently and is now a tester of FSD V12, that V12 is smoother than Waymo. Here is Omar in an excerpt from Yaman's X Spaces. And so then I took away my home and it was like driving through Chinatown, like making all these crazy moves. And, you know, they've really got it working to the point where it can do anything. And FSD 12 is actually already driving smoother and better than it in many cases. It still has more interventions and accelerator presses, but the end to end framework has already produced like maneuvers that I haven't seen a Waymo be able to do. And like, smoother driving less wheel jittering it's really kind of remarkable so i think the investment world hasn't in accepted enough as a conclusion that yeah we actually did figure out how to make self-driving work at a safety level greater than a human and it, it you know waymo did a study they said 80 percent of injury causing crashes were reduced so you could reduce 80 percent with the technology they have today and tesla's with their v12 basically going to make that available in a generalized way. So, you know, forget about Tesla for a second. Autonomy is definitely coming and regardless of who owns it, right? Even if Tesla doesn't figure it out and they have to license it from somebody else, let's say, let's say they have to license it from Waymo or Baidu or somebody, it's still going to change the nature of the auto business forever, right? So there's like this tidal wave coming and Tesla has been preparing. They've been saying, okay, we want to sort of own this technology ourselves." But it's going to transform, I think, pretty much every aspect of the business. Even if Waymo were to figure it out, maybe at the same time Tesla does, they don't have a fleet to just flip the switch on and start doing robo taxis. They got to either retrofit existing vehicles or buy up a bunch of other legacy auto manufacturing vehicles. So it's kind of difficult for them to scale. I mean, they're only doing, like Tesla does as many FSD beta miles per day, I think as Waymo does in like one or two years. So I don't know what their fleet looks like at scale. Yeah, while Sawyer was talking, three more Teslas that can run FSD were produced. One is produced every 20 seconds now at the 2023 run rate. Waymo has 1,000 cars total. Tesla's going to make 40,000 cars this week. I think a lot of people get caught up in, in the who will get there first. But even if you get there first, can you do it at scale? And like, even if Tesla doesn't get there first, which I think they will, they can do it at scale pretty pretty simply just because they already have a fleet of five and a half million vehicles. And, you know, maybe BYD has a large fleet too, but well, Amo, Cruise, all of them will have a difficult time. When I first heard that clip, I thought it was extremely powerful. When Omar said, Waymo has a thousand vehicles, Tesla makes 40,000 every single week. That got me. And I know I brought up this data point in my video yesterday, but that segment we just watched gave me a little bit of a different spin on things. The graph on the left is what the public sees, but the graph on the right is what is really going on. The only thing stopping Tesla from obliterating the competitors on the left is time. And when that time comes, Waymo will not stand a chance. And here's why. Waymo just hasn't really figured that out yet because their vehicle is far too expensive to scale. And they'd have they'd take forever to build them because it's all bespoke. Every one of those vehicles is is unique. So that therein lies the the problem with scale. 
So Wes, let me ask you, fast forward three to five years, how many Tesla robotaxis are operating on the road in US roads without a driver? And how many Waymo vehicles are operating without a driver? The short version to your answer is I, I did that calculation and I calculated uh, 2 million dedicated 24-7 uh, robotaxis are needed to take over completely the rideshare market. And that's not the normal like 2 trillion miles that uh, U.S. roads handle every year, but that's just all the rideshare current demand miles. Um, and obviously, Tesla would decimate uh, any competitor because they can operate at much, much less cost per mile. So I, I don't see there being any competition once they solve FSD. I just don't see how. There's there's just no, there's no TAM left available for any other competitor. So Wes said 2 million robo-taxis dedicated 24-7 could take over the existing rideshare market. Huh. Tesla's going to make 2.1 million vehicles in 2024 that are going to be capable robo-taxis. But the rideshare market is going to grow as the cost to rideshare comes down with autonomous vehicles. So now let's hear from Omar to see if he agrees with Wes that Tesla can take 100% of the rideshare market. You know, so there's almost no market in the world where there isn't competition. So, of course, you would expect ride-sharing to become, you know, kind of a commoditized market one way or another, naturally. But, I mean, you're talking like trillions of miles traveled, right? So you're talking like a multi-trillion dollar market. If you can capture, let's say, you know, a third of a $5 trillion market, that can be, you know, over a trillion dollars of revenue a year. So I don't expect them to be the only player, but I expect them to be one of the largest uh, scale players. And that's really what matters to people. They want to call a ride and have it show up quickly and have it be fast, have it be reliable, have it load all their settings, all the things we love about sort of the Tesla software experience today. And, um, you know, nobody's real, like nobody really has a path to having the software or the hardware or the production. Um, and Tesla's doing all three at the same time. But now the question is whether or not RoboTaxis launch this year. I mean, it's the first year Elon hasn't predicted it. So let's hear from Tasha. Yeah, I think it's possible that it would launch at some point this year. I mean, I'm not talking about everywhere all the time, but I think that is within the realm mm -hmm. of possibility. I'm like, I'm very confident that it'll launch within the next five years, which I, I think is kind of like the more relevant question if you're a long-term investor. Um, I think it's possible. And, and and again, like that's what the videos show us. It's like, yeah, they can do it. You know, how limited do they want sort of this initial launch to be? Um, that's my mm -hmm. feeling. And then you mentioned Dojo and yeah, Tesla was more cautious on Dojo. They are clearly, re re they continue to be reliant on NVIDIA, at least for the short term. But, uh, you know, we knew that they were training constrained. Um, so they needed, they needed this um, AI hardware to allow them to, um, scale uh, what they're training their autonomous cars with, essentially. Um, and so that's, that was an important bottleneck for solving for real autonomy. So hearing that they're, you know, continued, continuing to invest in this, whether or not it be like an internal or external like software that they're relying on, or sorry, supplier, not software, um, that they're relying on, uh, that, that's really important for autonomy. Um, and it's another thing that you, if you look at traditional automakers, it's like, what have they done? It's nowhere close, right? Tesla is rivaling, you know, tech companies um, with the compute hardware that it's purchasing. Uh, no other automaker is is doing this. So it's really like those three fronts that you know Tesla continues to just push push the envelope and and be the leader. Yes, Tesla is the leader, but there is actually a new and emerging player in the autonomy space who has a very interesting business model. It's a company that I don't see talked about very often in the Tesla community. Let's see what Omar has to say about Kama. I mean, I, I don't worry about Waymo, really. I look at Kama, actually. Like, okay, if someone can just buy a little thing for $1,000 and add an open source FSD to their car, that might actually be much more successful than Waymo. I mean, Waymo's billion, uh, business model is, you know, one where they burn billions of dollars of cash. Kama is actually profitable. So I would probably look at them, honestly, more than Waymo. Uh, when do you think is Kama changing lanes yet, Omar? Uh, no. I mean, Kama doesn't, like, you know, they don't really have the uh, same kind of hardware suite. They kind of have one thing. It's kind of like a dash-mounted GPS, and it's got a forward camera, and it's got kind of like two rear-facing side cameras. But there aren't actually, like, any cameras on the car. The last time I saw a demo 
of their end-to-end -end system, they were using the blind spot indicator for lane changes. So they weren't even like looking to see if there was something there. They were just kind of using the car's blind spot indicator, which obviously is not really a very high fidelity view. So their, their sensor suite is pretty limited. So we'd really be looking at something in the future, probably with an expanded sensor suite, maybe with cameras you can mount around the car, mount to the window or something like that. Um, or, you know, I believe it should be possible just with like a 360 cam on a, on a dash mounted device. I believe that by 2030, it should be possible theoretically to buy a GPS sized device, like a Garmin sized device with a camera that you know, it was just on your windshield and could see 360, see out your windows, and that should be able to drive the car. Or it should be able, or you should be able to have like a humanoid robot that could drive any car just by turning its head. So Omar, if someone comes to you and says in 2030, exactly what you just said, in 2030, you know, either you can get a 360 camera, put on any car, it'll be drive itself, or by a humanoid that can drive any car, then the value of FSD, full soft driving for Teslas is not hundreds of billions of dollars, tri trillion dollars. What do you say to them to convince them otherwise to buy Tesla stock? I, I think that Tesla could be doing over a trillion dollars of revenue in 2030 from FSD and related Tesla network services. When you look at, you know, 30% of all the rides happening on the platform, plus people, you know, buying packages, buying subscriptions, buying plans, whatever the hell the pricing looks like at that time. We're really talking about transportation globally people drive trillions of miles a year. So when the market goes from buying cars every few years to buying travel by the mile, there's going to be this huge demand for people to call cars to get around. And if they take even, you know, a quarter of the market or something, it's hundreds of billions of dollars, if not trillions. So I think the market opportunity is absolutely huge. Obviously, in any market in cars, you know, you expect it to be competitive, but autonomy will probably be a much, um, much many fewer players compared to the automotive market. In the automotive market, you really have a ton of players and they're all very sort of competitive with each other. In autonomy, I expect there to really be not more than three large players. Um, and the reason for that is just really the flywheel, the data advantage. You have the best system, so people keep using it, so it keeps getting better, so it becomes the best system. And kind of like how we have iOS and Android and or you know Mac, Windows, Linux, that kind of thing. It, it when you have these sort of tech platforms with network effects, it tends to sort of coalesce around two or three big platforms. And I think Tesla is going to be one of them. I think there will be others. I think one of them could be a Chinese company. They have actually incredible AI talent in China, and. Um, you know, maybe there'll be a third, maybe there won't be, but it's it's a much more winner take most or winner take all sort of market compared to automotive hardware because of the sort of network effects inherent in this AI flywheel. And it is for these reasons, I believe Tesla will be the biggest company in the world. And I'll say it again, on the left is what the public sees. On the right is what's really going on. But I also thought Omar's points on comma were interesting. Kama has demonstrated that their product works on over 250 cars like Toyota and Hyundai. Their open source software enables your car to steer, accelerate, brake automatically in its lane with improved functionality over time. As Omar said, it can't change lanes yet, but this is still really cool and I can see how this has potential to scale. So in this video, we looked at why Tesla is going to leave Waymo in the dust, but that led us to Kama. And how serious of a threat does Kama pose to Tesla? Well, I think that deserves its own video. So make sure you stay tuned for that video by subscribing to this channel. And I look forward to doing my research and presenting it to you guys with as much clarity as I possibly can. Talk to you later.